Hi, Tony here at Views from the Man Cave, and today I'm going to be fitting a Free Spirits X pipe to a Triumph Street Twin. Free Spirits are a company based in Italy who are very quick at turning out accessories for the Triumph Street Twin, um, but they've tended to go initially down the performance route. So uh, they offer uh, things like a belt conversion drive if you want to do that to a street tune, I'm not quite sure why you would, but if you want to do a belt conversion you can. They also do some very clever Brembo brake conversions uh, and they were one of the first companies I spotted that had made a decat kit. Not only is the bike going to sound a bit better losing the restriction from a catalytic converter, um, but you should be able to squeeze a little bit more power out of the bike as well. Okay, so this is the box that comes from Free Spirits. Inside, initially, the first thing you come across is the instructions, uh, which are very comprehensive, lots of photographs and instructions in several languages to be able to get you through that. Um, when I fit this, I'm going to follow these instructions so that you can see the procedure exactly as Free Spirits have highlighted it in here. And then inside the bubble wrap, you have the X pipe itself. It replaces the catalytic converter uh, and all it effectively does is just put a U pipe to continue the flow of the exhaust. As you know, with the street twin exhaust comes down, goes into the cap back out again. So if you look at the underside of that, there's a mount, the original shield goes on the front, but that's the piece. Um, it's not necessarily the most straightforward job, but we'll do this stage by stage and hopefully it won't be too bad. Job one, take the tank off. Uh, stupidly, I forgot about this and actually went and filled up with gas this morning, so that's going to make this tank just a little bit heavier. Let's get the seat off. Then you've just got these two bolts. This is an 8mm bolt. You've got a 10mm, uh, um, 8mm bolt and a 10mm nut on the other end. Once you've undone that bolt, just pull the rod out and there you, you can see we've got access. First thing to undo, there is a, a high pressure fuel line here, which just connects to this little hose. Easy enough to undo, just slide back that plastic clip and you see there's a little button here. There's one on either side of those. Compress those buttons, that will just lift off. You will get a little bit of fuel that spills out, but only a, a, a teaspoon or so. Um, and then just keep that up out of the way. Up underneath here, there's two connectors. Uh, I've loosened them here, you can see, uh, there you go, one, two connectors. They're actually clipped onto the frame rail with a little tab here, so you have to just lift those off the tab, and then you can pull those down and you can just disconnect those. And you've got a vent hose on the left hand side which you just need to pull off of the prong um, and then the tank can be moved out of the way. So as you can see there, the two electrical connectors are completely different. So when it comes to putting the tank back on, you can't confuse those and get those the wrong way around. Voila, there is the street tin without its lovely cranberry red tank. Job number two, the exhaust has got to come off. So you'll start by taking this shield off. So under here, little five mil Allen bolt, under these completely. So here you can see there's a a little clip, you can undo that completely and it comes off or you can unhook it from the top whichever way around you want to do that. Job three, once the cover is off you can see the bolts for the clamps of the catalytic converter. There's a 10mm bolt on those so you just slacken and loosen those off. Job number four, loosen the two 12mm nuts on the exhaust collar. Job number five and if you've seen my exhaust uh, fitting video you know how to do this you have to undo the bolt behind here to take the rear foot peg off which also acts as the top mount for the exhaust and whilst you're at it you undo this bolt as well now you may remember that I uh, gave you a tip to undo this foot peg some people have read on forums that have taken this circuit clip out and taken this all apart to get to the allen headed bolt that's inside here uh, but actually if you're undoing the 12 mil nut on the back all you need to do is push down on the foot peg and there's enough leverage for the end of the foot peg to hold that bolt whilst you undo the nut. But once you've undone this and this, you can then slide that manifold out. That all comes off in one piece. The next two jobs are just exactly the same but on the other side. Next thing is to get this front section out. 
and that means undoing these two bolts which we've already loosened on the collar and then removing the O2 sensor. Uh, you need to do that on both sides to undo these nuts. Shield then just comes off. So once these collars are off, you can see that's all ready to pull out. You need a 17 mil spanner to undo this, and then that sensor can be moved out of the way. Now with the collar off and the O2 sensor undone, this bottom manifold should just pull out. Next job is to uh, pull off the side cover. And if you've never done that before, it just pings off. There are three rubber bungs and you just pull that off. You need to disconnect the side stand switch. So this little fella here is the side stand switch. Uh, just compress the tab on the side and that will pull apart. Right, we're starting to get down to the nitty gritty now. So you just need to undo this bolt at the top and then the radiator, you can just lift it off of the hook at the bottom and just rotate it round slightly so you can get access to this frame rail because this frame rail has got to come off. So this is where it gets a little bit more involved. We need to undo this top bolt for this frame rail here. That's an 8mm Allen key in there and it's a 14mm nut on the back. So you've got to try and get a spanner up behind here onto the nut and then undo this and that's the, uh, that's the most fiddly bit is just getting the spanner onto that bit. Um, and I suspect it's going to be a bit of a pig to get that back on as well. So once this bolt is out from up here, next one is to undo this. So this is where Triumph like to mix their sizes. 16 mil on the bolt, 17 mil on the nut. Next job is to undo these two Allen head, again another eight mil. These actually do have a captive nut, uh, a bracket with a captive nut on the back. As you can see with these two undone, that gives you the ability to move this lower frame. Uh, and that just gives you room to be able to pull that to one side to be able to get the catalytic converter out. Next job is to undo this bolt here. Okay, so there is a 12 mil bolt that comes out of here. And then around the front on the inside, there's another 12 mil bolt. Again with a captive nut, so that makes that easy. Uh, both of these have a washer on them, so make sure you get those washers. And then with those undone, in theory, the catalytic converter, with a little bit of help like this, there's a rubber bone on the other side, and there we go, the cat is out. So that's the one at the front, there's the one in the middle, and then there's a rubber bone that sits on the other side. So there's the cat. Uh, it's actually quite a heavy thing. Uh, what we need to do is transfer the bungs off of this onto the X pipe. Right, so as you can see here, we've got them laid by side by side. Um, that's the cat, that's the X pipe. There's quite a significant difference in the way. What we now need to do is uh, take this rubber bung out and swap that to here. We need to take this rubber bung off of here and put it on the prong here. We then need to remove the Allen key out of this cover because that's going to go back on there but I think we'll probably put that on once the X pipes in place that'll be a little bit easier to do and that fits on the same that's what these two prongs are to hold the bottom of this in here and then obviously these clamps and the seal that sits inside them also have to come off and go onto these sections here so uh, for the purposes of keeping the video short I'll get her on and do those that's pretty straightforward pry this out bit of WD-40, squeeze it back in there, loosen these two off, put them in there with the gasket that sits inside. There you go, you can see the gasket that sits inside of those. And then this rubber bung that comes off of here goes onto there. I'll do that one for you now, that's straightforward. But I'll get on and do these, and then we can get on with getting this little baby back onto the bike. This is all ready to go. Now it's a case of putting that, getting that rubber bung in place pushing that into the other side. So once this is pushed on and lined up, you can just nip these two bolts in. And obviously once they are in, 
we know that this is in exactly the right place. And then it's a case of going backwards and doing the reverse of what we did before. I'll go through and give you the torque settings because these bolts will need to be torqued back up. This larger bolt here needs to be tightened to 80 Newton meters and the bolt at the top, same as the side stand, 45 Newton meters. All of the frame rails now have been tightened up and torqued up. The rad can go back on. Reconnect the side stand switch. Now the refitting of the exhaust is just the exact opposite of what we've done. You've got a graphite gasket in here so you've got to be careful when you're putting it on here that you're not chewing that up. I would probably put this lower section on first to make sure you get that lined up and in nicely. That's gone on very easily and then put the top in. Push that home. That's got a nice seal. That's gone all the way home so now it's a case of um, just tightening that clamp up and we can go ahead, put the O2 sensor back in here, then put the clamps around on and tighten that up. Then it's again putting the rear on, just following the, what we've done on the way through. So put all the mounts back together. The exhaust all back on, double check everything. We go over every single nut and bolt, make sure it's all tight and make sure it's done to the right torque setting. Then all that's left is to get the tank back into place. So you remember, vent hose on this side that just pushes on. You've got your two clips the other side and then your speed pressure clip for that. Bolt that down um, and then we can see what it sounds like. Now I'm obviously going to take this outside and give you a proper test of the sound but I just couldn't resist just giving you a quick sample of it now. So here we go. So there you go, the fitting of the Free Spirits X pipe. If you follow the instructions, now I did it the way that it shows in the very comprehensive instructions that you get with the kit. Lots of photographs, lots of instructions, and this covers both the Street Twin and the Thruxton. There's some slight variations with the Thruxton. But if you follow this, it's a fairly straightforward job. The sound difference is evident, first of all. It doesn't make the bike obnoxiously loud but it certainly opens up the exhaust you also get a little bit more pep out of the motor it feels a little bit more urgent now free spirits claim that you don't need to have the bike remapped if you're using this x pipe even when i switched to the vance and hines uh, us spec pipes uh, i didn't really need a remap you can ride the bike fine without the remap having the remap done just tweaks it a little bit and i think makes it a little bit better um, so it depends on what you want to do whether you want to use remap or not I guess one of the uh, trickiest bits for somebody doing this at home is how to support the bike. I'm lucky enough that I've got a bench. If you wanted to be brave and not access this from the left hand side, you could probably do it from the right hand side as well. Uh, you could potentially then do this on the side stand, but I think getting access to that top nut at the front of the, uh, at the, front of the rail is gonna be the most trickiest bit. From the left hand side, you can move the rad around without disconnecting it to get to it. Uh, from the right hand side that might be trickier, fiddlier, but I guess it is possible. The other alternative would be to fit a set of bobbins and Free Spirits make uh, a set of those for the Street Twin. I hope this video was useful for you. Uh, thanks for watching and until next time, take care, ride safe and I'll see you soon. Bye.